What's up, you funky mofos? This is Sean here from Soul Circus. Some really cool stuff this weekend. Friday night, I'll be celebrity bartending at Bistro 42 in Prospect. Come on out from 9 to 1. There'll be a live band, and it's a really groovy time. I make really strong-ass cocktails. If you're a lady, you get all greased up real good. If you're a dude, you can pick up the chick. So that's just how that goes. Saturday night, the full funk Soul Circus train rolls into the levee at the River House from 9 to 1. Come on out and have a good time. As always, stay tuned to Shooting from the Lip right here to find out all Soul Circus concert dates. See y'all next week. Love, peace, chicken grease, my people. Let's get busy. Live from the Shooting from the Lip studio in Louisville, Kentucky, it's time for Shooting Stars with your hosts, Kevin Hale and Greg Unthank. What's up, everybody? Kevin Hale in the Shooting from the Lip studio on this Wednesday night, November the 9th, the day after the storm, if you will. That's probably all I will, I will say about Tuesday, Tuesday night, as the, the world, not, you know, I guess it's the world. It's a different, uh, different time of day these days. And, uh, the USA, if you will, spoke at last night. So, again, moving moving forward tonight, it's all about music. It's all about local music, the local music musicians here in town. And as usual, I do it up with my brother from another mother, Greg. Unthank G Money. What is up with you? Hey, Kevin. Hello, Americans. How are we? <laughs> Americans. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, we're good, man. Yeah, we're good. We're, uh, you know, at the end of the day, we all need to come together as one. And, you know, and as you and I said, there's nothing better to bringing a lot of people together than there is uh, with music. So yep. praise, praise to uh, the notes and the sounds of music, the voices and the drum beats, the guitars, keyboards. The art and the emotions. Exactly. People who that's, are telling a that's story. Deep, isn't it? That's pretty deep. Yeah. It is very deep. Um, I like it too. Um, some quick social media plugs for us. You can find our shows on YouTube and iTunes. Subscribe there, please. Shooting from the lip. We're on the SoundCloud and Stitcher apps. Twitter at the Shooting Lip. My Twitter at Kevin Hale four two three. Greg is at Greg underscore Unthank. You can like us, follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Live tonight via Blog Talk Radio. Wednesday night, smack dab in the middle of the night of the Shooting from the Lip shows, as we do a Monday and Friday night show as well. Check those out. You can check them out on our. Facebook page, Shooting from the Lip. Tonight, we music. I got to give a quick shout out to Bistro 42, Miss Judy, Chase mm-hmm. Skinner, Eric McEwen. Uh, the guys were doing the acoustic thing tonight. I got to uh, hang out oh. with uh, three of my chitlins tonight. We did dinner and listened to some tunes. Always a, a g- good time at uh, the Bistro. Uh, and then to end the night, Shortly before I had to leave, Greg, Sean Wallace mm-hmm. shows up, and you know it's it's not a party until Big Sexy Sean <laughs> Wallace shows up. <laughs> yeah, always on the scene. Uh, he is. Uh, God love him, and uh, he's got a birthday party coming up this Saturday yeah. uh, for their that. gig. So I'm I'm going to try to go hang out with them. But spare change. Let's give a shout out to your band. Uh, they were they did the. Gerstle's gig this past weekend, which I really tried to go to. My body, my sinus infection just did not oh, allow me that, to do man. anything. I stayed That's in awesome. Saturday night, but how how was your gig Saturday? Oh, gig was good. It, uh, uh, Gerstle's is a fun place to play. You know, there's always uh, always a good crowd that comes in there, and uh, it's, uh, it's a cool bar. I like to set up. Uh, cool people work there, and uh, 
always seem to drink a little bit more there, um, which is not a bad thing. I, I did have a designated driver, but, uh, yeah, it was a good gig. Um, so, uh, uh, we'll be playing there again in the future next week, or actually this week we're off. Uh, then we got Spare Change Millionaires playing uh, next Saturday the 19th. We're going to be playing at um, New Directions. Yeah. Uh, it'll actually be, be the first time that I will be uh, at New Directions with the band. They've been there, but uh, it's the first time with me. So looking forward to that. So, um, yeah, and then a few gigs uh the beginning of December. Uh, since you've got me rolling, I can go ahead and Spare Change Millionaires will be playing TKs on uh, Saturday the 3rd. But before we play there, I will be playing with the Brian Fox and Good Chiggins uh, oh, yeah. at, at Bistro. Uh, Bistro, no, we'll be at Baxter's 942. <laughs> and uh, we'll be doing a double show. Actually, we're, we're playing uh, opening up for Wildwood, which is a shooting from the lit favorite. And uh, <laughs> we're going to, Brian Fox will be doing a, uh, a set. And. Uh, kind of featuring songs off his uh, his uh, new CD coming out. And as uh, soon as we get done doing that gig, I'll be rushing straight down the street to play uh, with Spare Change at TK. So that's about all I can keep up with Is right he? now. Yeah. It's a lot of, lot, of, lot of gigs coming up for you. I hear you. Yeah, they're spread out. Yeah. Uh, tonight, we'll, uh, our first guest is on hold. We'll be bringing him on soon. It's Mark Beyer. He's with the... Uh, band the rigbys who um you've you've got history with greg you not too long ago you got to sit in with them right yeah a couple weeks ago i sat in with them out mm-hmm. at uh wicks pizza i've done i've done a few gigs with them great band if, cool. you, if you're in, into the beatles if you're not into the beatles you still need to go see them after you mm-hmm. see them you will be um just the uh, beatles. great bunch of guys great mus- musicians and uh they do the beatles the best you can can hear the beatles for real they're great mm-hmm. musicians and uh and uh yeah mark is uh the keyboardist with that band and uh he also has another gig that he does we'll let him talk about that uh, uh an international cool. i guess you could say touring band called rain mm-hmm. and we'll let him talk about that too which is uh Very cool. something to catch if they come in town you definitely want to catch that Cool. Uh, second segment, we'll have uh, Josh Bogart. Uh, he's the front man for his band, Josh Bogart in the Dirty South. And then ending the night, we'll have uh, Jake Badger coming on a little after 11, doing some promotion for uh, promoting Wildwood, his band. So without further ado, Greg, um, as we, I mean, what's your history with Mark, Greg? No, uh, just uh, the first time I met Mark was uh, uh, actually uh, they needed a drummer for the uh, for the Rigby's, and uh, I believe we had some mutual either. friends. Yeah, we had some mutual friends, yeah. and and uh, got to do uh, got to do the gig with the Rigby's, and and and, uh, and I'm such a likable fellow that they called me back. So. <laughs> they did, yeah, and you are. That's why you keep coming back. Actually, you you complete me on Monday night. That's hard, why you're with me. It's hard it's or hard Friday to get rid of me. Thing. It's uh, I don't know. Speaking of yeah, speaking of Mark, his mic's on. Mark Beyer, uh keyboardist for the Rigby's. Mark, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, thank you. First time caller. <laughs> First time caller. Uh and and it, I would I hope it I I hope you would say long time listener, first time caller, but you may probably be a first time listener, but regardless. Well, you know, uh, I, I left fair. that up to you. I oh, kind of left that right. open. Oh, yeah. Well, Mark, thanks for hanging out with us. Actually, Greg, I'm surprised. This is the reason why I asked Greg, Mark, how long have has he known you? Usually, Greg likes to, you know, use Wednesday night show as this kind of reunion for you know. Greg's been playing music for over 30 years, so he gets all his buddies that he's known for all these years who are very talented cats here in the local music scene. But he gets them on, and we just start talking about. You know, back when Greg and so and so first jammed in the basement or garage, uh, but this is a little different. You know. There's, well, no, we've all been in the basement in the garage, and oh yeah, yeah. we have to return to yeah. the basement in the garage. Well, you know, Mark, uh, I said the first time we met was with the Wrigley Spot, but I don't think that's that's true. No, I actually, I, I actually, uh, maybe I can jog your memory. Yeah, uh, yeah. The late Bob Keister. That's uh, right. Is either a friend of yours or in the family uh, in some uh, both. indirect he was way? My, he was my best friend that became my brother-in-law. And, and that's right. And you you all were playing with uh, 
uh, another band, I should say. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I met you when you when yeah, I met you when you were in the band uh, with with Bob. That's right. That's right. So that's Bob been, and, uh, that's been oh, over man. ten years ago. I'm sure probably yeah. fifteen years ago. Bill Miles was in that band. Uh, Barry King was in that band. Is that right? You got it. Yeah, man. Now you remember. Yeah, I do remember now. That's right. So yeah, we've known each other for a lot longer than than what I was remembering, man. Sorry about that. No That's offense. all right, but you know, I I had heard Greg like to play for free, so we thought we'd give him a try. <laughs> yeah, that's it. There you yeah. go. <laughs> um, you know, with Greg, uh, Mark, you know, there's that famous uh, little line about Kevin Bacon, six degrees of Kevin Bacon, you can tie <laughs> somehow six movies, six movies or six people, something like that about with Kevin. I think we we're, we're probably, we're not sick. I think we can go three or four where, you know, in your case, Mark, there's probably within three people, you and Greg can connect. And, oh, yeah. yeah, but you did know, you say it, something about bacon? Cause I'm Jewish. <laughs> oh well, then, yeah. My apologies. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Uh, well, Mark, share with us what's the uh, Mark Byer story. Oh man, have you got thirty seconds? No, it's, it's, uh, it's, got, it's a bit longer. We than have. That. Well, actually, we'll have we have sixty seconds. So, all right, go for it. Well, uh, I think I've got a reputation around town of, of uh, being the uh, the Beatle guy, and uh, really, uh, if I'm the Beatle guy, I'm just the biggest fan around here but uh ended up uh uh making that my specialty in music and that started about uh actually uh six years old when i was watching the beatles cartoons on uh on the tv i don't know if you uh, remember the beatles cartoons look in your history book mm. and uh, i think i uh i think i got a uh, mop and put it on my head and started strumming a broom or something <laughs> i just wanted to be like that but uh, mm. uh, it's my favorite music and um, I consider it far above just about any other kind of popular music, like Beethoven or Bach. Greg's old enough to remember Beethoven. I, I do remember Beethoven. I do. Yeah. Uh, something t- you something tells some me. Bands. I guarantee there's there's three act music acts that we can probably tie Greg to that eventually played with Beethoven. Oh, no, yeah. I, would, I would say so. He used to yeah. hang out with him. We do have a, another mutual friend that I think has been a guest of yours, or soon will be. I hope I'm not uh, blowing the cover. But um, uh, my first rock and roll band where I really learned how to play, because we were all teenagers, was with Greg Forsman. That's right. Back oh. in the 70s. And that was a, a band called World. And, of mm. course, uh, Greg's wow. well-known around here and went off to play with Martina McBride. Right. And uh, <laughs> so, so your Greg has played with that Greg. So there's another connection. Mm-hmm. There's another one. You, you, you know, Mark, uh, do, do you remember playing a gig at the uh, Kenwood Drive-In with World, maybe? You know, that, that I might not be able to deny that one. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was like the first concert I ever seen. My cousins put me in the back of their car, their trunk, actually, so they didn't have to pay admission for me. <laughs> and uh, it was a sun-kissed concert, and it was world and a band called circus i believe no, and that's been uh, so long ago it's been a long time but, ago uh, I, i'm usually the guy that was the guy in the trunk but i was yeah. trying to sneak into movies i wasn't old enough yeah yeah the, the old trunk trick yeah <laughs> but uh yeah i knew i knew that you had done that gig and uh, what else did you do before you started doing the beatles beatles stuff I, if you care to bring it up well, I had uh, about a 22-year stint with uh, Karen Craft and Kicks. That's right. I, I, I still get um, questions about that to this day. Yeah, well, yeah. um, we won't we won't question anything about that. They they were pretty big. Uh, uh, Kevin around here, they did the uh, you know the fairs, right. I guess you could say, and the Jim Porters a lot, you know. And Karen Craft, she was you know real popular around town. And uh, Mark, you know, they they had a lot longevity for sure. And Mark was a, a mainstay in that in that band for a long time, and um, we had a house gig that, at uh, Flaherty's. If anybody Flaherty. remembers that nightclub, it was like nine years we were there. I played and it was a bit of an older crowd, ironically and appropriately. Yeah. Now it's a urology office. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's a good transition there. You know, hey, oh, I carry my God. own rim shot. That's great. His own rim shot. Nice. Oh nice. my gosh. 
I played flags uh-huh. before uh, B.G. Johnson. And, and, Absolutely. Uh, well, that's, that's another one that's, that's not around D. anymore. Yeah, so I, I don't mean not BG's around, but Flaherty's is not. Yeah, Flaherty's is not. Right. As, as, as a, a lot of a lot of live venues, unfortunately, around town have disappeared. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, one thing we really need to talk about that I'm going to get you started on for, for the listeners is uh, Mark is in a band called Rain, and for those who don't know, Rain is a I guess you could call him international. Mark, is that right? I mean, you guys go out of the country. Is that correct? Well, uh, I sure have woke up in some strange places, uh, mm-hmm. Japan, Germany, England. Yes, it yeah. is an international um, touring show, um, usually on the Broadway circuit, and uh, we actually did a stint on Broadway. It's a very large show, uh, wow. five costume changes. Uh, these are um, pretty much spot-on look-alike, sound alike It's supposed to recreate the appearance, or, or the experience, excuse me, of... Uh, mm-hmm seeing the Beatles in concert through all the different eras of their career. Oh, wow. Uh, multimedia, wow. and um, got a tour coming up in February where I have to leave town for nearly three months. Mm-hmm. Coming up oh, it, wow. it's, a, it's a spectacular show. I've seen it twice, and, uh, man, it's just it's totally awesome, I have to say. Mark Mark does a, thank you, thank a you. Fan, fantastic job. It's it's. Uh, Really, something to any of the listeners, if you have not seen it, you know, you need to get the opportunity to go see it. Uh, I know that they played the Center for the Arts a couple of years ago. They did a, a whole weekend or two weekends there, from what I can remember. And uh, maybe I'll play there again this past summer. Is that right or not? Uh, I think it's been a couple of years now. I think the last thing we did was at the Palace. The Palace? Wow. Yeah. Okay. But, um, uh, listeners can go to raintribute.com and see some stuff about the show and maybe uh, look at the schedule and catch a city. I, I don't think we're going to be any closer than Cincinnati this year, but that's not a bad drive. No, no, no. So uh, you actually sing as well besides uh, keyboard, then, right? Well, I don't know if you want to hear that. I don't. I don't claim no. to be a, a vocalist, <laughs> and I, I've uh, actually shied away from that more and more as I've gotten the okay. opportunities to work with some of these Beatle guys that can really sing. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, now, now with this, the, the Beatles thing with rain, don't y'all have different, I guess you could call them different cast members. Sometimes. That is exactly what we call them. And yes, uh, that's a necessity. Um, you know, if you have a, a, a throat go out or, or an illness or just, uh, uh, time to rotate to avoid exhaustion, you've got to have, uh, a, uh, rotating cast Ooh, yeah. and I, I too have a guy that uh i trained he's uh from nashville and uh when i need a break or it's his turn uh we both know the show and uh we swap it out wow now what, what oh, about I'm, I'm actually it's, 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 yeah it's go ahead, you go said ahead. some groupies um some <laughs> screaming girls we have screaming. some uh, original beatles groupies and um you know they come in on a bus from the nursing home <laughs> and, uh, and they do scream, but I think it's for a different reason. Uh, you, know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, man. you know, at oh, our man. age, is are we complaining? At, at our age, is that a, that's not a still a, not a bad thing, is it? <laughs> oh no, we're we're still kicking. Exactly. That'd be the alternative. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not, not as high. high. Yeah. <laughs> now I am. I I do have the. Uh, the website pulled up raintribute.com and I do see now how uh, when it comes to the the band that there are I mean I, I'm now understanding the the concept of this so there's uh, I'm close to 10 band members or actually looks like maybe more than that um yeah, there, there's guess, been uh, occasions where the show has been on two different continents playing simultaneous shows and oh, that's another situation wow. where of course you have to have a, a multiple cast members. Gotcha. Huh. Well, I mean, is it good Lord? I mean, you're, this thing is big enough. And I, I say this with all due respect that you can play. Um, you can take this rain uh, event, if you will, and uh, play in two different cities at the same time. I mean, that, that has, that has been done. Saying. That has been done. Wow. Um, this current uh, upcoming tour for 2017, uh, at least the first part of the year, is all within the United States. 
and um, it, it'll just be one cast with uh, pinch hitters coming in to relieve sometimes. Hmm. But there, there's has been some crazy busy years. This will be my starting my ninth season with them. Wow! wow. I didn't realize it's been Jeez. that many years already. I yeah. remember when you first got that gig. Me too. Oh wow! Time flies. It, it does. And I'm yeah, I'm looking at. Uh, I had pulled up a there was a YouTube video that um, Greg had sent me a couple YouTube videos. I just had them playing at the side. And I mean, I'm I'm looking at the audience here. This is no joke. You know, again, I get. Oh. I say that with all due respect. I mean, these are. You know, I I guess you know, yeah. The Beatles are the Beatles, and you guys are obviously catering to a a group of people, an audience that um, grows with every generation. It, it never goes away. Um, no, this, this it, is timeless. This yeah. is that's why yeah. I, I I was actually very serious about Bach and Beethoven. This music is going to be mm. around a hundred years from now. Mm-hmm. That's a good and, yeah. uh, right. John Paul George and Ringo are going to go down as uh, famous composers. Mm-hmm. And this this might have been yeah. that their era of classical music, and we we try to pull it off uh, note for note and uh, connect with the audience on an emotional level. A lot of them are remembering, are old enough to remember being teenagers and and this music hitting America for the first time, and then the excitement, and they they feel young again. And yes, mm-hmm. with uh, the the uh, it speaks for the music, how it's going from generation to generation. And, uh, uh, you know, it's kept alive through their, the, the movies and the rock band games for the kids and right. uh, all the repackaging and remastering and iTunes. And uh, it's just legendary. Not just note for note, Mark. It's it's hairstyle and wardrobe for wardrobe oh, yeah, it's and a, hairstyle. It's the whole, it's the whole <laughs> yeah. illusion. Yeah. Uh, that's incredible. I'm looking at this. I'm blown away. Um uh, and then, but you know, to stay closer to home, you know, with the with the local band, how yeah, the, the, uh, the, the rain tour is not um, right. um, it's uh, not going year round, mm-hmm. and uh, I have to get my fix around here. And uh, I've got some talented guys here in Louisville, and um, they're as big a Beatle fan as I am. So we try to bring that music uh, around town here, and that is the Rigby's. So- yeah, the rig do now do the uh, Rigby's, um, are they on hiatus while you're away with rain or? No, they that... can continue. I wouldn't want to hold them up. Okay. Uh, they okay. can All either right. play shows with a, a four piece arrangement because I am the fifth Beatle being keyboard player and there's right. plenty of okay. material they can do without me. But also, um, uh, I have pre recorded some of my performances. And uh, I can be there with the Rigby's even when I'm not there, and they'll they'll just uh, uh, run a track of my playing if if needed. And uh, Mark is also, I mean, the Rigby's have played the uh, the Abbey Road on the River. Um, gosh, I mean, every every year that 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 has uh, been downtown, Mark has been involved, and the Rigby's have been involved with that. How many years straight has that been going, Mark? Well, uh, I think the Rigby's have been there probably uh, nine or ten years, and uh, I've added one or two years myself because I'm um, kind of on the staff with that uh, festival and involved in uh, developing and and participating in some of the bigger shows with with different ensembles. And I'm uh, lucky enough to be able to play with all kinds of international Beatle bands that come in, and Uh they'll they'll need uh, orchestration or a keyboard. Yeah. So Uh, it's 11 or 12 years now. Wow. And uh, am I right? Is next year going to be uh, maybe over across the river at this point? Or is, is that a done deal? Or That's a done deal. It's going to be in Jeffersonville yeah. for the first time. Wow. And um, uh, it's going to be new for all of us that have uh, yeah. gone to the festival annually. I actually took a drive down there um, a few weeks ago just to explore and see how it's going to look. And uh, I still don't have a full image in my mind. Uh, how work, you, how do you feel about different. all that? that? That's a pretty pretty big deal for the festival, I know, and and for Louisville as well. Uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, how I think, how, uh, how could Louisville let that happen? Because to <laughs> me, this is this is this is part of, you know, this is uh, this is a net. I mean, this has been going on for, in Louisville for such a long time. A lot of people. Um, well, you know, you I'm know, not privy to all the all the okay. details. But uh, I think there was some articles maybe in the paper, mm-hmm. and uh, I think there was some 
some business conflicts uh, with the, the promoter and uh, maybe the, the Galt House Hotel down there, but I don't claim to know the, the real story. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I uh, think a lot of people loved it down there in Louisville, but we'll have to give Jeffersonville a chance and see how it turns right. out. But it was a beautiful right. layout down there uh, mm-hmm. on the Belvedere. And um, Yeah, but the show must go on, so it's good that it's uh... – it's still somewhere close. Yeah, I'm glad it's not Abbey Road down the river. <laughs> right. It's on the river. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, that's, that's, that's good. I don't know. So, yeah, Mark is the Beatles guy for sure. Well, yeah, I, you know, one, one of my – Right. One of my uh, normal questions to guests is, uh, you, you know, your influences. But, uh, you know, I guess it's like that would be like a duh question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid so. <laughs> yeah. It'd be rinse and repeat. Just okay. What I said a moment ago, I'm just gonna say it again. Um, the now that you know with social media, how how is uh, how do you the band interact or, or use social media to your all's advantage these days? Now, are you speaking about uh, rain or the Rigby's or either or, or both? Either or, just in in general. Yeah. You know, well, to, with rain, uh, tried something uh, very new. Last year, and I'm going to be honest with you, I'm pretty old school. Um, I, I, uh, technology is part of my craft because I work with computers and uh, do a lot of programming and mm-hmm. editing uh, to try and recreate these Beatles sounds. But um, as far as the uh, Facebook and all that uh, stuff, I don't use that personally. I'm uh, very kind of private. But uh, Rain uh, did something called Rain by Request, and they actually got. Uh, Twitter going there in the audience, and there's one particular part of the show uh, where they can uh, tweet for their uh, favorite Beatles song, Ooh. and uh, we will actually spontaneously perform that on one certain part of the show, and uh, intermission is where they uh, send in their request on their phone, and I think there's a, a screen up on intermission, and the, the, they tally it, and uh, it makes everybody feel like they have a, a say, so that's one way they're using it. And uh, Rain has a so management you, company and, and people that handle all that kind of stuff. So, right. so if uh, I want to hold your hand gets the most electoral votes, they will play that the next set. Right. There is an electrical ele- 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 electoral college for uh, uh, the songs. <laughs> Good Lord. Because they get the popular to, vote doesn't mean. You had to remind the politi- you had to, yes, the the politics. Bring politics back in. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Lord. Yeah, but you know that's that's a cool thing. And to me, if you if you do want to use social media to your advantage, I've thought of that a lot of time. And I've heard you know music acts you know nationally when they go, they'll they'll uh, you know I've seen or heard that they'll on their big screens they'll they'll pull up their they'll show Twitter on the on the big screen and they'll just you know, randomly like look at a tweet in that the in the request from so and so, you know, where you're the the audience is interacting or whether it's the audience or actually could be, you know, just fans who are not at a at a gig throw out, you know, their song. But yeah, there's still there's so many ways you can use social media. Um and I'm I'm looking at your Twitter right now. I mean you you guys over three thousand thirty six hundred followers on Twitter. Uh, your Facebook page, you've got, uh, you're closing in on 150,000 people following your, on this that's is the few. rain, uh, Facebook page. That's, that's a damn wow, good crowd. And uh, <laughs> probably, yeah, but, um, you know. I'll tell you another uh, way I use it. Um, after the show, we like to go on and search and see what uh, videos were thrown up on Instagram or wherever they put them. Oh, and I yeah. can uh, uh, see you know how we did on the performance that night through some short videos from the audience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so uh, how how is that's a good that's a nice little segue. How is and you this is you personally. How is it? How do you react when you're all doing uh, in a performance? This is we'll say with rain because the obviously your audience is huge. I mean you got a nice crowd there. But what does that do for you guys when you're performing and you look out in the crowd? And you see some, you see obviously several people are holding their cell phones up, film, they're filming, obviously filming, recording it. You know, I've, I've seen people like recently Adele, and I've noticed a lot of acts that will 
you know, actually stop and call out people to put their phones down and just pay attention, uh, you know, live the moment, you know, don't mm-hmm. record, you know, and um, uh, actually it's a, it's a pet peeve of mine, not just uh, particularly when I'm performing, I just don't really understand it. That you're there to experience uh, on a exactly. much bigger screen than a little four inch phone, a live concert. Right. And, uh, I'm just amazed that uh, if I go see a show and somebody hits the first note, up go the cell phones, all the arms and all yeah. the cell phones. Yeah. I don't, uh, I don't understand it. And we've, we uh, like to put humor into the show, uh, but humorously, I have seen uh, some of our cast members call out the audience. They will, uh, depending on their personality and the mood that night, stop the show and come up to the yeah, front of the stage and strike a pose and say, oh, here, how, how does this look for you? Okay, take one like this. <laughs> okay, let me smile. Yeah. Did, we, did you get enough? Okay, put your camera away. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, and uh, they'll shine a spotlight on them. <laughs> and there's the power yeah. of the microphone. Yeah. Right. Power yeah. of that, that uh, light shining down on you. Yeah. Um, and I asked that. Right. I asked that because, you know, I, th- I think I've shared this story with you, Greg, but you know, one of, uh, you know, I won't mention the person, uh, the local guy, good friends of yours and mine, Greg. Um, I was at one of their gigs and I started recording it and, and I, on Facebook, you know, doing the Facebook live thing, you know, cause to me it was promoting them, but you know, in a, on a break, I was asked, he asked me, you know, politely not to record. And I was like, okay, why, why not? If you don't mind me asking, He's like, mm-hmm. well, he felt it took away from the people who came to see them that, you know, I'm now accommodating someone or people online that, um, you know, didn't make the effort to go see. Oh, uh, see well, them. they just watch it instead of coming out. Right. Well, and, that, uh, that, that is one angle. Um, right. Yeah. One angle with me is, um, you know, uh, the lighting may or may not be good. The sound mix, depending on where you are in the venue, might mm-hmm. not be optimum. And cell phones are not optimum, and they're not professional videographers. And you can get some unflattering right. stuff up on YouTube um, mm-hmm. that uh, just didn't capture what was really in the room. And nobody likes to have uh, unflattering mm-hmm. stuff out there for the whole world to see. Not that The performance mm-hmm. could be great, but it can give you an impression uh, if the acoustics are bad or the lighting is bad or whatever. So it's, right. it's pluses and minuses. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not a, myself personally, I, I'm not a camera guy. I, I don't even like taking band photos, but, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I can totally understand, uh, the, the, the fact of, um, you know, poor lighting, poor sound, you're, you're just not getting a very, very good representation of what's going on that night. And, you know, I've seen big time bands, you know, really take take offense to it. Like, uh, I don't know, I can't can't point them out, but uh, Kevin made a good point though with um, with that whole thing. But uh, yeah, uh, they're they're never taking pictures of me anyway, though, Mark. I'm the I'm the guy in the back, you know that. They're always getting the getting getting the front guys, the pretty guys. Yeah, the lead singer guys. Like 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 the Garys, the Garys of the world. They 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 are. <laughs> They hold yeah. all the power. They do. They hold the power. All the groupies are up front crying for them. You know, and there's always the scenario where the band works up a new tune and uh, not many people in the audience. And you don't want that shown on YouTube either. But you say, hey, let's make this a little sneak rehearsal. Let's try this brand new tune. And there's always a risk with that. That that could go off the train tracks. And <laughs> lo and behold, it's posted. Yeah, there you go. Oh, well. So. Mm. Yeah, um, technology, today's technology, social media, everything changes the whole dynamic. Um, now, you know, with rain, with you guys with rain, have you all released like um, videos or I mean, like DVDs or like a some kind of that gone that route? Well, because my, obviously, uh, rain, rain did a uh, PBS special. No, and okay. it was actually right before I joined up, so I'm not in that. But um, that was a uh, uh, repeating broadcast on uh, mm-hmm. PBS, and they uh, also sell things at their merchandise booth, um, live CDs of different eras of the show. So right. they yeah. they do have uh, live CDs. 
Greg, um, when you when you played with um, with the band, um, the Rigby's, uh, mm-hmm. like you you have uh, all of those Beatles songs. Do you know all those Beatles songs? Did you had you already known them? Because it's no, the Beatles. no, okay, no. Uh, you know you've heard most of the tunes all your life, but right, right. Uh, you never realize how much more there is to them until you have to learn them and try to do them, you know, the way that the, the Rigby's would like them done. I try to try to do my best at, at Hey, at, Greg does a great job, everybody. Oh man. Great, Thank great you. job. Thank but uh, I, I, I'm uh, I like I have to do better. <laughs> nah, <laughs> I always, it, it, always uh, feel that. We all feel like we could always do better. That's why we keep mm-hmm. striving. But um, uh, it's interesting to hear you say, and, and I always, get a little chuckle when people that think these Beatles songs are easy because you can hum along with them so easy. They sound so simple. And when you go to try this stuff, it, it's it's amazingly difficult, actually. Yeah. There, there's a, a feel that you have to cop, if, if that makes uh, musicians know what I'm talking about. You have to mm-hmm. cop that feel for, for that, that music, for that particular song. And man, the Beatles cover the whole gamut. I mean, you look at what they started out with to to the to the days that you know to their end uh, back in the seventies, and then you know the uh, Wrigley's even plays uh, uh, solo uh, material from you know George Harrison. They do Paul McCartney stuff and Wings, and uh, you know the, the feel of the music, the the style of rock and roll that they played. You know, you got the Drug Beatles back in the. Uh, I guess what, Mark? Would that be the Sergeant Pepper days? Uh, sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or yeah. you know, where they're kind of—I uh, don't know how you would describe that. They were psychedelic. Yeah, psychedelic, being experimental. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it all—it changed a lot, man. So you got to cop that feel, and and, and most uh, of that music was never meant to be played live. Yeah, so they did any took any liberty yeah. they wanted to in the studio, mm-hmm. and with no intention of ever playing that live. And to try and recreate that stuff is quite a challenge. It is a challenge. It is a challenge. And, and you know, with me, my thing is when I'm playing songs that I don't play all the time, like with Spare Change, you know, I play that music all the time with them. My thing is, oh, gosh, okay, that song, I know that song. I've played it a bunch. How does it start? So that's any time you I need that first <laughs> note. Oh, okay, that one. <laughs> so... I'm always we all go hard. through that when we get uh, oh, just tons man. of songs in our brain. Yeah, song mm-hmm. soup, I like to call it. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, there you go. All right, well, check us out, Mark, as we're uh, wrapping up uh, this segment. We do what we call um, round of shots. I'm going to throw six questions at you. It's kind of like a quick Q&A. Have fun with it. Round Nothing of shots, personal. am I going to get drunk off this? Well, you know, if if you well, – I think with – with these, you might leave with a slight buzz, but you know, all right, happy, um, you know, happy, happy. There you go. <laughs> Number one, what was the first concert you attended? Okay, um, I was uh, pretty young for going to a concert, uh, so I was drug along. Maybe he was uh, babysitting me, my with my cousin, but I went and saw Loggins and Messina. Ooh. Oh, and wow. uh, the warm up band was the Stories. They had that song, Louis, 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 Louis. Louis. Ah, oh. mm. and I kept smelling something really funny, like something burning funny. during the concert. I smelled and, that at my first concert. Yeah, and I did not know what that was, mm. but I remember that odor. Yeah, but you do now. I know what it is now. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. but That's you don't smell it as often as you did back then. No, you don't. You, you don't. don't. You don't That's, anymore. And, and why is that, well, Craig? Because ventilation systems are a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, cool. Um, number two, Mark, if uh, you're if you could be stuck in an elevator with one celebrity, who would it be? Oh come on, you can almost answer that. Oh, that would be be that would be what, you. Um, no, no, John? no, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Even though I did meet him, and we, we could have had a cool story on that, it's just too long. Uh, I would uh, like to meet Paul McCartney again. Wow, okay. that wow. was a, that's my a little side. Uh, this is a little two way, if you will. Um, have you personally met 
the Beatles, any of them. And you yes, just, I bet Paul uh, McCartney. Okay, just Paul. Sure. Pardon? Just Paul. You haven't met just, Ringo. Just or, Paul. Or, yes. Mm-hmm. Just Paul. Because uh, you know, I, I know yeah, Ring, did you, uh, Ringo does. Uh, all, you know, he does his little All Star Band thing that he. Oh, been to that twelve times. Twelve times. Yeah. Wow. McCartney I, twenty I times. Look, yeah, I was. Uh, you know, I was looking at videos of one of their uh, recent gigs. I actually probably been a couple of years, and some of my favorites: uh, Greg, Steve Lukather, Greg Bissonette, uh, Richard yes. Page, Mister Mister. Uh, yeah, you know, um, that's why they call it the All Star Band. It is. It is, is for, yeah, Greg Raleigh was. Yeah, he was under Greg. Raleigh. Oh um, wow! Yeah, um, some incredible lineups over the years. Uh-huh. Yeah. All right, number three. What's your favorite phone app? Favorite phone app. You know, uh, th- this is probably going to be cliche, but uh, Uber Uber has come in handy. Uber out on the road and oh, everything. You know else. what? That's a good answer, actually. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. Um, no, no, not Tinder, but Uber. Okay. We'll get that. You know, at our age, it's um, called Tender. Te- yeah. <laughs> tender. Yeah. <laughs> it's very tender. Yeah. Um, now, here's, I'm a, here's a couple that are kind of uh, head scratchers to me that I want you to help me answer. Oh, I'll be glad to help you. Uh, let's see. That was number four. Or the, yeah, number four. How far east can you go before you're actually heading west? Well, man, I feel like I'm in school. Pop quiz. <laughs> really? Really? Where'd that come from? Where did that come from, Kim? I actually looked some of these. I looked for some quirky questions, and I thought yeah, I was looking at the list, but yeah, I was like, yeah, you can go east, but eventually, you know, especially if you're doing the globe, you know, you're following the globe. Half, eventually, half aren't way. you? Halfway How is it? The world. Is no, I think that's a loaded question. I think no matter yeah. where you are, you're heading west. East will be always be east. East will be, west will okay. always be west. All right. Here's a, here's another good one. Number five. You know, the, the Wally Coyote. You're familiar with the yeah, infamous. I know him. Yeah, I rooted for him every cartoon when it came to him and the Road Runner. But I, you know, here's a question: If he had, if the Coyote Wally Cody had an, all this money, enough money to buy all that Acme stuff. Why didn't he just buy dinner? Man, he's he's just really, really stupid. Or you know, I would have just actually hired a hitman. Not it was the thrill about of the hunt. It was, it was the, the thrill, thrill of the hunt. hunt. Thrill of the it hunt. Is. Yeah. I now he's making more answer. money as an actor in the cartoon series. Probably. <laughs> yeah. That's it's his ego. It's an ego. Right. Yeah. It's all an act. Those are actors. All an act. the they're all actors. actors. They're all actors. Uh, all right. Six. The last one. If you had access to a time machine and can go anywhere in the past, your living past or you know pre-birth past, where would you go? Let's go to Ed Sullivan's show. I knew it. February oh. 9th, 1964. He had the exact date. Beatles take the stage. Yeah. Do you I have was, the exact time time of that event too? Oh, just uh, take me back the the whole day. The whole day. <laughs> okay. I was cool. thinking that, or or either the uh, Yankee Stadium. Is it was that the, the, the was it the Yankee Stadium gig? Shea Stadium. Shea Stadium. Okay. Shea Stadium. Okay. Oh, you know, yeah. I don't think anybody heard a note at that show. Probably not. It too sounded many. like uh, screaming crickets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. But at well, least you, you could see him at the Ed Sullivan show. But I wonder if they looked like in black and white in person. Well, it, it would look uh, it would look like if you were to go see Rain. It, it might go, go see Rain and uh, mm. you'll see that that re- recreation. Cool. Hey, really? guys, it's been been fun. Got anything it else? Has now uh, that's that's the round of shots. Uh, sh- before we let you go, Mark, share with us uh, quickly. Uh, the band's social media and where you'll be, um, you know, uh, showing off in the very near future. Okay. For, uh, in town, the rigby's band.com. Be sure and put the word the, the rigby's band.com. Mm-hmm. There's a calendar of, uh, local gigs on there. And of course I gave you the rain tribute.com mm-hmm. for that. I understand rain has a Facebook page, but, uh, they do. 
I'm too old school to operate that, but I think you could do a search and find that. You yeah, actually, yeah. you on your on your f website, just uh, yes. you know, f you got it covered. There are there's the Facebook link and the Twitter link, actually, and uh, Instagram link as well for rain rain tribute. So it's yeah, great. I guess they they got their peeps covering all that stuff. They yeah, they, they do. Yeah. I just concentrate uh, on what I know how to do. And you do hey, it well. Mark, uh, I appreciate you coming on and uh, and sharing the cool stuff with us, buddy. I really appreciate it. Hey, it was a lot of fun well, talking to you guys. Yeah, good luck good with stuff, the show. Man. All right, thanks I so much, man. In. All right, yes, you have a good thanks. night. Bye -bye. All right, See you, take buddy. care, brother. How cool was that site, Mark Buyer Keyboards uh, with the local band, the Rigby's, the Rain. Uh, uh, the, it's the tribute to the Beatles as well. National, actually, not national, international. Yeah, I mean, internet. throw that, yeah. in, throw that in our face. I mean, and, yeah. and you know the, Trump, and, you know, Trump we touched Trump. on it. I, I, I kind of briefly went on it, but you, you, you're doing a tribute band in this case, the Beatles, who are arguably are the most recognized, uh, maybe one of the most important bands ever. Well, they're they're and, probably the most influential band. In most uh, influential, yeah, right. yeah. I mean, you talk to any. Any big time music star these days, I mean, anybody, you grab them, you say, Hey, who was your influence? Oh, you know, when I seen the Beatles, I knew I wanted to be a musician. You as know, soon as I saw them, them, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, just, and we're talking huge, famous stars, we'll say the Beatles, you know, so. All right, uh, exactly. I them the most influential band, for yeah. sure. Well, what I, what I was getting at is that for them to, be a tribute band to the Beatles, who mm -hmm. most influential, most important. There, there's, there's no uh, margin for error, if you will, Greg. They've got to pull this off to a T, or the fans can't buy it, won't buy yeah. it. You know, well, it, the fans, the you fans know, know. You know, you got right, exactly. Serious, serious Beatle fans. Uh, you know, I, I oh, will yeah. say, I mean, they're they're, they're a, a a guy I'm in a in a band with. His uh, a wife and friend are such big fans of the Beatles. They traveled to London, England, for a vacation and went to, to the actual first club bar that the Beatles played in. Mm -hmm. It's uh, that important you know, they, to them. Yeah, where they had their first yeah. gig just to go see that yeah. place. You know, it was really yeah. So, it's not a yeah, novelty. Yeah, they, they, yeah, it's yeah, not a novelty. Know if it's not, right. They know if right. it's not sounding right. And the Rigby's, along with Rain, you know, the local band, the Rigby's, they're the same way, man. I played with them a couple of weeks ago, and uh, on a break, a gentleman grabbed me. He was sitting at the bar, an older gentleman, grabbed me and said, man, you guys are fantastic. He said, you guys sound exactly like the Beatles, and, and I enjoy you all so much. And I told him, I'm just a sit-in guy, and he said, well, you're, you know, you all sound great. So... Um, okay. Yeah, they they pull it off very well, very well. Very cool, very cool. Um, let me go on and turn on his mic. I appreciate uh, Josh holding for us, Josh Bogart, the man who heads the Josh Bogart and the Dirty South band. Josh, what's up, brother? What's up, man? How hey, are you, Josh? I'm good, man. How are you guys? Good. good. What's new with you, JB? Oh man, same old, same old. Uh, just trying to get this music thing going. Uh, raising kids and working. I hear you. Now, now, Greg, if you remember, not too long ago we had uh Greg White on uh, the yeah. show, and you know he was promoting. He, I, I was, I guess, shortly after he got hooked up with you, Josh. Uh, you've got what it sounds like. Look, I'm going to look at your site, the your band, very solid. This is something that uh, you're clearly taking seriously. So tell us about oh, yeah. you and what you got going on. Well, the whole point that I got going on right now is, is uh, I want to uh, take my music to the next level and, mm -hmm. and see what I can do with it. And then, you know, just to put myself out there, my music, the stuff that, you know, I do and the band does and let it be heard. And uh, I think the group that I got right now is, is we're a family. And that's important to me is that keeping that, that, that close knit of a group. So when you play together, it, it's, it comes together as one. You feel each other. You feel off each other's vibes, and that—that's really what the ultimate goal of this is—is is just to to get 
the music out there, the stuff that I enjoy, and I hope everybody else enjoys, and and that's my that's my goal. Yeah, you're clearly, if I'm, you know, I say this again with uh, with respect. You're the kid when it comes to the band, though. <laughs> You're the young one. Yeah, I'm the young one. Thirty. <laughs> yeah, but thirty-three. Yeah, that's thirty-three. Yeah, and, but you've got a lot of experience. Yeah, you got a lot of experience with you, so that's got to. Well, you know, with well, I'll tell you what. Being with, you know, I did. I've been doing this for well, it's going on 10, 10 11 years now. Ten years now. Um, mm. Started out doing just acoustic stuff by myself, and I I didn't know much. I learned everything pretty much on my own. I, I picked up the guitar, learned how to do it, play it by myself. Nobody helped me. Um, just a few people would here and there would teach me a little bit. So I, and then when I joined Van Whalen, them guys, you know, I love them as a family. They really kind of stepped me to that next level from going acoustic to, hey, you know, you want to be in a band and try that out. And, you know, being a front man with Glenn uh, was a huge learning experience for me. And they taught me pretty much on how to play with you know four or five other guys and and to bring it all together and get the rhythms right and, and to sing with everybody else because if you know one person is off then it throws everybody out so it's that was a huge experience so having that behind me and uh, you know I, I appreciate them guys for everything that they did and to now being at, to to have my own stuff that I'm doing with with the guys that I'm with now being with the Shane Dawson and Six Miles South and you know and then Rick filling in with multiple multiple bands as a drummer mm-hmm. uh, to take this to the to the next level has been amazing it really has well actually uh, I didn't know you had a history with Van Whalen so that's uh that's cool I did yep yeah, I was yeah. I was with them for I'd say five four or five years I mean, oh really great. wow yeah, we used okay. to play up. I was with them back in Phoenix Hill days. <laughs> it seemed like Phoenix Hill was my my home away from home. We were there quite often. You know, we played a little bit everywhere. So right. being mm-hmm. being a part of the front man with with Les and Mike and and uh, well, we've went through a couple of, couple of different drummers. Um, I was even there when Gary Adams was in the band. So it started out with with me, Gary Adams, and then Glenn Zelch singing. So they they brought me on to do. You know, Gary Adams was rock. Glenn sung a lot of the the, the older country and, and some rock, and then they didn't. You know, they wanted some the newer country, and so we brought that all together. So when we were playing Phoenix Hill, it would nobody would ever leave the room because you never knew what you were getting. So that was a really cool experience and to know when you when you pack a room, you can keep a room, and mm-hmm. that that was was a great experience as well. You know, uh, Greg, I know you've got history at Phoenix Hill, but I have to admit, man, I flipping miss that place. That whole <laughs> right? vibe, no, really, no, yeah. that whole vibe, the the atmosphere. I mean, you truly, it, it it was, you know, you know, whether it was you're upstairs or on on the at the main on the main stage or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. That that place just, man, it was perfect. I'm still, you know. I don't again. I guess remind me, Greg. You you probably know, what happened with Phoenix Hill? Why did it? Is it just it, it was it that Man, it wasn't making money, or was it from that, a business perspective? That is my theory. That uh, you know, and along with uh, Jim Porter, it's the same owner, right? You know, the, both of them, and I, I think, and 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 Kevin, well, you know, uh, I mean, you guys were going there years ago. It used to really hop. I mean, right. you know, ten ten years yeah, ago, right? Man, you would go to the place, it would be lined up to get in. You would it would be lined up up and down the stairways going from the from the main floor to the upstairs. And then as right. time went on, it just kind of fell off and it didn't get the crowd that it used to. And uh my guess is it was just hard to keep the doors open and, and to pay the people and play and you know, pay the overhead and eventually it just got to where it, it wasn't worth it anymore. You know, sad to say. You know, really? right? Okay. You know what I like? What I, what I liked about Phoenix Hill was it was a place where, like, say if we were, we we played up in the roof garden a lot, was when mm-hmm. you were done, they they timed it right so you could go watch other bands, and then when they're done, they come watch you. And it was a, it was a time yeah. where you could go see everybody. I mean, we like the Velcro Pygmies would be downstairs, and we would go on break and go down there mm-hmm. and watch Velcro Pygmies. Or that, or we'd go into the tap, you know, the the other room, the tap room, I think is what it was called, and then yeah, watch some of the acoustic stuff that they had going there. And that was a place for right. us to meet other musicians together 
and talk because you know musicians do speak a different language than most, and so it's <laughs> it's, it's our own little group. It's our own little group, and so yeah. it was it was nice to be able to go and, and do that. And now there's not really a venue that that puts on that many people in one. In one area. Well, that's good. I was going to actually go bring it. That's a good point because, but I think it remind me, Greg, uh, Josh is is diamonds probably the closest thing now where yeah. you know got several acts, yeah. you know, and right. I just think that I've all, I always found that to be I, I dug that because it's like you you in a night you're consuming yourself with different types of music, you know, getting to see people that you don't you hadn't heard or whatever and, and right. um yeah yeah so i'm just uh, I don't know, yeah I'm, yeah and just like josh was saying it gives you an opportunity to see your friends make friends and see them playing because you don't get to see them as much you know because right. if you're playing they're playing at the same time so you know it, it's right. hard to catch other people so it, yeah. it's mm-hmm. a good fellowship time for the band members for sure i agree yeah. Good point. And the, Good the, point. just the, the history of the, the stuff they had in. I mean, there was multiple times I'd walk through this place and be like, "Man, I wish I had that." <laughs> Tell me some of the stuff. Yeah. There. It was really cool. It was really neat. Man, I have got. Uh, I don't know, Josh. You remember Jim Porter's? Did you ever play Jim Porter's? No, but I've been there a few times. The old Good Time Emporium. Did you ever make it into the dressing room behind the stage? I did not. I did not. Okay. Well, In the well, dressing well, tell room. Tell me about it. <laughs> In the dressing room behind the big stage, uh, everyone autographed the walls. It had, you know, all the main bands that came in there and then all the local bands that came in there. And when they closed the place down, there were a few autographs on the wall. A, a good friend of mine's autograph who had passed away was on the wall. And a buddy of mine was doing demo in the place, and he called me up. He said, hey, buddy, would you like to come over here and get some names off the walls? <laughs> oh, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so I, sh- I actually showed up out there, and he handed me a Sawzall. It, it was uh, <laughs> some plywood walls. And I, I cut squares, a couple squares. I got Blackberry Smoke. I got their autograph, and they would oh, awesome. the wall. And then I got uh, my friend's. Uh, autograph off the wall, and I actually framed it up and gave it to his daughter for for Christmas oh, gift. Awesome. But uh, yeah, it was like you were saying, man. A lot of uh, uh, n- n- nostalgia there. A lot of cool old um, stuff that got auctioned off, and uh, you know they had a lot of stuff in both places for sure. Well, it was it, it was just, to me. It's just local local history, and you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. It's almost got its own. It's, it's almost its own little history here. So to have, mm-hmm. I mean, there's national actually came in here, and, and it's just sad that, that they closed down. Yep, I agree. Now, in you both, I'm gonna throw this question out to both of you. Now, it, let's exclude Nashville. What regional location town, um, G- Greg? I start with you, Greg. Does uh, that rivals the music, local music scene here in Louisville? Well, I don't understand the question. What is it again? Well, I mean, I, excluding Nashville, because, yeah, but locally, to me, the local music scene here in Louisville is dynamic. It's huge. There's so much talent. Regionally, where can you go and just th- that location, that city is killing it lo- with their local music? Well, I mean, you know, it- I would say any any city... Uh, you know, there's, there's these guys who come on, they, they play on the road a lot. Um, they would know probably some of the smaller towns that, that that's pretty good, but I would just say, you know, you go to Indy, they got a cool scene, you know? Yeah. That's uh, what I was going to say was Indianapolis. Yeah. Indianapolis, mm-hmm. Cincinnati, you know, they got a cool scene. Lexington. I don't know so much about Lexington. You know, you know I've played Lexington through the years and, and never, I don't know, man, it's something about Lexington. It, it, I just never really had had a lot of fun playing there. It's, it's something odd about about Lexington, but uh, but well, it's just more of a it's a, it's a it's a college it's a college area. So it's you're in Lexington. Lexington you're saying I've done, yeah, yeah. yeah, I've done a lot of oh, acoustic okay. stuff here lately with actually Dustin Collins, and you know we've had good success out that way. Well, I'm trying to. I really don't have much of a fan base out towards Lexington, a little bit in Frankfurt area, but mm. I'm, I, I want to get out that way. But there's really not. Not a anywhere whole bunch. to go. Right. Yeah. I mean, there's here and there, but it's 
it's not as much yeah. as it, it, it would be here. You know what I mean? So yeah. the, mm. the bigger cities, you know, you're looking at the right. bigger cities like Indy and Cincy. They got the bigger bars, the you know, bigger population, more bands. You know, it just kind of right. kills the figure. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Um. Hmm. Josh, I was thinking the last time I saw you, where did I see you at? County, you weren't playing. County line. County line. Yeah, no. you were not playing. No. But no. right now, no. what's no. uh, no. been your all? Yeah, if we were, I think I actually, without giving too much away, I pulled up and immediately went and hung out with you and your little group <laughs> in the parking lot. So, uh, and that was it's it's fun stuff. Um, all right, yeah, you gotta have fun, man. It's lots of miles. We do, and and the line is is great when it comes to the you know the country yeah, music. Great, man. What right. besides the county line, and I guess what is it PBR? What where where do you hit the where where else are you you know doing your uh, gigs new at? directions? Well, you know sure. new directions. I got that coming up um, this Saturday. Uh, well, right now this Saturday doing, you're there yeah, this, this Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, new, new, yep. Okay. Number right. twelve. Yep. Uh, right now, you know, I've I've had well, I've only been really with the band start up what six months, five months now, six months. So we we've, we've done. Mm. This past year, we've actually done a lot of, I've done a lot of private stuff here lately, which I enjoy doing, you know, parties uh, on the lake. Uh, so that's actually kind of been different. I've, I've you know, stepped into a, a whole different little scene and still doing a lot of private stuff. Um, what I'm trying to do is pretty much get into PBR, Diamonds, a lot of the, the bigger venues, I guess you would say. I'm more opening up for people, stepping in that, in that area. Um my favorite place right now is PBR. If you want to be honest, I love the atmosphere. A lot of people don't. I've heard, but I just love it. I love, I love the 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 feel of PBR. It just, it's almost like my little Phoenix Hill. You, you know what I mean? And so, just that atmosphere going back. But I'm really trying to reach out to Indiana, like the Rusty Bucket, Tin Roof, places like that on Chevy Road, and then more to Diamonds. Mm-hmm. Things like that. That's that's what I'm reaching out for right now. That's my goal. <laughs> so, what's uh, when and it I comes got to County your coming next year, I think. Do you? All right. I didn't know you were doing it New Direction, so um, mm-hmm. I may have to check you. I'll be uh out and about, actually, kind of that out yeah, of right that in that town. Way. Yeah. Um, and Greg, Spare Change is it? Is that your next gig with Spare Change in New Direction? Yeah, uh, next weekend. Next weekend. So yeah, yeah. There you go. Um, yeah, I'll be it. I got PBR the following that following it, the nineteenth. Was that the weekend you're playing there? Yeah, that's uh, correct. Two directions the nineteenth. Yeah. Right. Uh huh. Yeah, it's probably change, PBR. Fair change, millionaire. Yeah. Cool. Um, you know, John, when it comes to uh, your music set, your set list, uh, how much original music you got going on these days? Uh, well, right now I just got the three, the the three song EP stuff that we're doing. Um, the band's working on that. Um, in the process of, of writing some more, um, working that out as we speak. So right now, just 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 three songs. Um, I got uh, better all the time that I wrote with Justin. It was actually sitting for a little while in, in the writer's pool, so I couldn't really do too much with it. Um, so I didn't really work it out with the band. So. Um, we're going to be working on on that one as well to get that together um, to bring that out for people to hear. But uh, so four four songs, if, if, if so, you'd say four original. Uh, very cool. And eventually, cool. I want to actually be more more ninety percent original. That's that's my goal. Yeah, I'm but still waiting to hear. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm still waiting to hear some uh, original music from greg's band blue funk that he's been promising to share with me that you've yet to yet to do greg <laughs> yeah what's up with where's that at yeah yeah greg. i know I yeah know. i know um i'm terrible about all right that. Josh, yeah, we're, we're, uh, we're talking about going in the studio and redoing our stuff so uh really yeah, that could be coming up soon yeah yeah cool um yeah Josh, i got to uh i was telling greg tonight i was uh at out at bistro's having dinner with my kids and got to hang out with uh chase skinner he was doing a gig out there um and listening to live music and eating man that might be the best second best thing to do you know from a guy's perspective right just saying we all know what the first thing is just saying 
<laughs> Just say, Kevin. I want to ask a question. Is Chase Skinner? Do you? Is he? Uh, is he related to Leonard? Leonard Skinner. <laughs> Oh, that's a good one. He could be like a grandson or something. Do you have an oh, answer? Oh, uh, you know what? We're going to find out. We're going to find let's out. Ask There's the, let's ask him. Yeah, let's ask Leonard Skinner. Skinner. <laughs> Chase Skinner. Oh, it's a different, two different, uh, my bad. My bad. I'm it's a different that. spelling, but it, yeah, phonetically it sounds the same. All right, uh, okay. Josh, before we let you go, um, We've got or well, real quick before we've got a I've got a music question from uh, some uh, music fan of yours. But uh, before we let that person ask a question, share with us your social media, how everyone can connect with Jobo, J-O-B-O, J-O-B-O. and the dirt. Yeah, Jobo. <laughs> uh, you can just, uh, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, I'm working on getting the, the Twitter together right now. Um, you can also look me up just as Josh Bogart as well. Um, I do uh, the kitchen sessions as well, so you can tune in on that and oh, okay. uh, throw in requests. I do acoustic acoustic stuff usually once or twice a month. I try to throw that much as I can out there. I've been doing that for uh, it's been quite a while, five years now. Um, been putting mm. stuff on little acoustic stuff, the things that the band's learning or I'm learning, um, and I and I kind of give that one on one acoustic sit down in my kitchen and and the and do that. Uh, a lot of people like that, and I've gotten a lot of good reviews on on that. Um, yeah, I've seen that today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do. I, don't know, I got a few of them that I got coming up, um, so they can go on there and request and send me a message on there, um, whatever song they want. And they usually, I try to to pick and respond to everybody as much as I can. Um, sometimes it gets overwhelming. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you can you actually can go on and and, and go to the Dirty South and, and check out the music video that that uh, we just did. Um, I put that out a month ago and got right at a hundred thousand views, one hundred eighty thousand views on that music video. Oh, wow. Hundred thousand views in, in four days. Uh, so it, it's a uh, cool. called Cold Dead Hands. You can get on iTunes, uh, Google Play, iHeartRadio, and iTunes and pick that up. The single Cold Dead Hands. Very cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've Very seen cool. that too. That's, that's that's cool, man. That's good. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. It was, All right. Well, it was, uh, it, was, it, was fun, it was a fun video. Yeah, uh, check us out, Josh. Uh, turning uh, the mic on for th- this uh, sexy mofo uh, caller. What's your question for Josh before he leaves? Hey guys, how y'all doing? Good. How are you, brother? Good, man. Uh, hey, uh, I'm coming out to the PBR in a couple weeks to see you, Josh. You think you can play that uh, wagon wheel for me and my old lady? <laughs> oh, well, for sure, <laughs> definitely. That's, <laughs> that's definitely. That's definitely a, a song that we can do. That's a favorite. Yeah. Josh, do you, Josh, do you know who this is? Josh, do you know who I this don't. is? I don't. I don't. Come on. Go who on. State your name, caller. Uh, this is Jake Badger. <laughs> oh, what's up, brother? <laughs> what's up, man? Oh, not much, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah I'll play it. Jake Why Badger has an old got, lady got, these days. I, I see that. Yeah, I'm gonna make you get. Up, I'm gonna make you get up there and play it. Yes. <laughs> oh God. I'm gonna make you dread the song like everybody else does. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I like to call this song sure. "Gagging Wheel" at this point. Yeah. Gagging I Wheel. Do, I don't ever. Hey, it's it's a song that you can go to a small bar and towards the end exactly. of the night, you, get drunk, you can play it. And everybody it's will dance. Hit. Everybody knows it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Don't um, play it to it, start it, the night. That, play it no, at the end of so. yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to see if. Uh, I want to see Greg. You play wagon. Uh, can you? Uh, you got the drum beat down for wagon wheel, Greg? No, I can't. I can't do that one. <laughs> not, e- not even. Uh, not even. Not uh, even. A little. I, you know, I buzzed or... over myself, man. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> yeah. one. I can't even do that. One. <laughs> it's, that's a tough uh, song, man. Like it's a hard one to shake. Like something that a lot of double bass in there. I can't really do it. Yeah, man. yeah, I can't. I can't. Yeah. <laughs> so much, so I'll much work talent on, on this. I'll so work much on talent it. on this call. You know it. Um, you know, let's, let's check hey. this out. People who are listening, you got uh, Greg Unthank, who is like who's played with Beethoven. 
back in the day. Yeah. Uh, drum, <laughs> you, you, br- drummer from Beethoven back in the day. Josh Bogart, uh, you know, and Jake Badger, two young youngsters doing the country music thing. Um, well, Greg, I mean, it's, uh, you know, this is, uh, you know, in all seriousness, this is that younger generation, if you will, of musicians who, you know, pick it up, pick up yeah. the, uh, you know, c- continue it for the local local scene. And, you know, I know these guys that have uh, goals and aspirations to take it to, you know, various levels, but, um, you know, but well, that's what we need to do, man. I like to see the camaraderie too, man. You know, that's exactly something that something that I've noticed. You know, I'm an old guy. I don't. Mm-hmm. A lot of these fellas I, I meet from the show, um, right? But uh, yeah, the camaraderie that I can see between them all—they all know each other. They, you could tell they they've hung out and out in the parking lot, you know, out out there at the county line and stuff together. <laughs> Um, that's like one big family, <laughs> and that, that's well, always you know, a good place to hang and get to beat somebody. You know, that's, that's exactly. Right, hell yeah! Well, well, the way to, I look at, well, the way I look at it, uh, you're, you're gonna play, you're gonna play music, and you got something that that you all do and love, and that's the reason why yeah. you do it. it it's exactly. to support each other. I mean, we're all we're all local, so we that's might as right. well mm-hmm. support and try to help each other out instead of not liking each other and oh he's not any good or whatnot. It, everybody's doing it for the same reason. And the same yeah, reason right. for, for is, chicks, is the right? For chicks? Yeah. Yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. actually actually I started mine because of my ex wife. She's my ex wife. That's probably why she's my ex wife. She's my ex wife. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this uh for the record, this whole uh podcast hosting thing, you know, I'm there's I, I you know, without giving away too much, I, I may be uh, telling on myself here, but you know, I'm starting to to uh, see the whole groupy thing develop, uh-oh. and yeah, uh oh. So, anyways, Josh, <laughs> yeah, good. yeah, Josh, thanks for hanging, thanks for hanging out with us. You oh, got thanks for having me on, brother. Appreciate your, it. Your, your gig this Saturday at New Directions. Wish you the best. Holler at me if you need anything. Uh, Mikasa do, Sukasa. Yeah, so take care, brother. We'll be in touch. I appreciate it. Y'all have a good one. Thanks. All right. All right. Thanks, take care. Brother. See you. Later. And and here we are, Greg Unthank, with uh, our residential whore, if you will, Jake Badger, <laughs> who somehow, someway, always finds his way on the show. Uh, it's funny tonight, Jake. I was uh, I was at Bistro. And you're, for some reason, your name, Wildwood, came up no it was oh it was claire my daughter claire was like uh we were talking and um she threw this compliment out she's like jake looks happy <laughs> are you happy these days jake i'm very happy uh, a lot of, lot of no nah, not music there. wise not music <laughs> wise not job wise you know the yes, old lady have, you know and i say that with have, due respect you know <laughs> some eye candy oh, there lady. brother She's she's yes, actually she's good. Exactly. That's what Claire. Yeah, great. That's what Claire, so Jake Claire is made some play. Jake is getting some play, is. man. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> he is, and that was Claire's <laughs> comment that j- right. she's like, "Have you seen Jake? Have you seen Jake's girl girlfriend? Dad, she's beautiful." And I'm like, "Yeah, I probably <laughs> looked at her picture once or a hundred times on." <laughs> so anyway, no, I, I love we love Jake. We you know actually Greg. Jake's hot too. He is hot. Don't just Jake, Jake. Jake is like Jake is like a shooting from the lip guilty pleasure. We got to get him back oh. on just whether or not <laughs> he's got any information for us. I got to get him back on. But this time, Jake reached out to me. He's like, "Do you have time for me?" And of course, I've got time for Jake. So, Jake, what's up with you? What's up with the band? Tell, talk to us. Well, uh, we took some much needed time off for uh, a couple weeks um as far as playing gigs we've still been rehearsing and and writing some new material um had a blast down in nashville um we, you know, we recorded an ep down there and we played at the wild horse and that whole week flew by but it was such a an awesome experience we had a great time and uh it really brought the band a lot closer together and uh we're looking forward to being back in Louisville here soon uh, December 3rd, we're back at Baxter's, but tomorrow we head up north to Indy for our, we played up there, uh, I guess when we first started out about two years ago, we did kind of a charity gig up there that was kind of, it was, 
it was sort of private. It wasn't like a big public thing, but um, this is our first public show in Indianapolis. We're playing at the Hi-Fi, and uh, looking forward to that, looking forward to getting in front of some new folks and uh, getting back into the swing of things, which is towards the end of the year, so everybody's kind of slowing down, getting ready to go into the holidays, so we only have a handful of shows left until we get into the new year, but uh, we're already starting to, to build on 2017, and... Um, we are going to put out our EP at the beginning of next year and going to have new pictures and new videos and new everything. We're doing like a whole new rebranding of Wildwood. So we're really? looking forward to it. It's wow. going to be a lot of fun. You say When you say new branding, um, what, for, you know, sound-wise? <laughs> or are you going to, like, let your hair grow out? Or what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I think I've, <laughs> I've passed the part of letting my hair grow out. But, uh, we're, no, we're and, doing, and Greg. Uh, and Greg too. <laughs> I feel him on that. Yeah, yeah. But uh, hey, if mine's not turning loose, it's turning gray. So I'm good with it. <laughs> I hear you. But uh, no, it's just more of a. I guess we're remodeling uh, Wildwood, kind of refreshing the image. Um, kind of, I don't know. We're taking our, we're getting a new logo and just kind of a new look. Um, you know, like going to update the website a little bit and just new music and it's just kind of a refreshing for us and. And okay. um, for all of our followers. And you do yeah, have a it's, nice it's following. Good, man. It's, it's good to freshen yeah. up and change things around a little bit, you know? It, yeah, it keeps everybody it. on their toes. Yeah. And, you know, Jake, we're playing a gig together, man. We got to mention that. We're, we're playing a gig December 3rd out there at Baxter's. Oh, oh you're there? Oh, that's right. I uh, didn't know if he's aware, but I am I'm, I'm I play with uh, Brian Fox and Good Chickens. Oh, really? That's awesome, man. I didn't know that. Yep, yep. So uh, that's going to be so a we, fun show, man. I can't it's wait. It'll be cool, man. Yeah. What yeah, now? What what's fun. the date on that? What's the date on that, Greg? Or December what? December third. December third. I'm I'm pretty sure. Yeah, December third. Yeah. Is that a? We're, we're going. I'm looking at the calendar. What is that? A, we're going to uh, open that's a Saturday. Saturday. Yeah, we're going to open Saturday. the show up. I'm there. Cool. And, uh, Brian's going. Brian's going to focus on some of his new material that he's got on the CD coming out, and then uh, and then uh, Wild would come on and. And uh, finish the night out, and and I got to talk to Jake about the drum situation, you know. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> we'll get yeah. this squared away. I'll take care of you. Uh, yeah, I you appreciate drummer. that, man, because I have to immediately immediately leave leave that gig and go play TKs with another band. So I'm going to be. Oh yeah. Oh wait a minute. Oh, that's what you were saying that night. So you're with yeah. Brian. Uh, Brian, yeah. Greg, you're you're Brian. You're fo- yeah. Brian that Fox, gig. Yeah. And then you're going with spare change later. Yeah. yeah. Oh hell, old man! You can you pull that off? Oh, dude, Dad, you can. Papa. <laughs> yeah, I can do that. Okay. Yeah, one show Throw that in our face. Good time. Yeah, do you... it, it will be. It will be. But uh, really looking forward to the to the Baxter's gig. You know, uh, playing out there because you all bring a lot of people in and they give Brian an opportunity to, to to play in in front of some other people and. You know, and uh, and he brings in some people and give them an opportunity to see you guys. So it's a win-win for for both bands for sure. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, tell Jake, have you all you you played up in Indy before, right? With Wildwood. Uh, we did. It was like a big charity event. Okay. Um, two years ago, it, it was for some somebody that uh, Kevin knew, and it was kind of like an annual thing, and. Uh, mm-hmm. We went up and did that, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but that we haven't been back up there since, so we've been trying to break into that market. So this it's is a cool kind of place, like man. sneaking it's our cool. foot in the door. Where where is this? What's it called? Hi Fi? Is that where you're playing? Yeah, the Hi Fi. Where where is uh, that in Indy? Do you know exactly where where it's at? I'm not 100 percent sure. Uh, I'd have to pull it up on the uh, Google Maps, cool. but I think it I think oh. it's right. Right in, as soon as you get into town there. Downtown. And, okay, yeah, that's what I was getting ready to say. In the downtown district there, it's, there there's a you know there's a, a little area there uh, uh, where where a lot of a lot of clubs are, which by Union Station and around the stadium and that area there. That's what I was thinking. Check I, this. I check yeah. this out. I go. I pull up because this is this is how I operate. Highfiindy dot com. I pull the site up, and the first freaking picture i see is wildwood it's jake Major. it's jake is jake, <laughs> jake Major standing up with his arms crossed with this serious look jake on his face wild. yeah but yeah you're there uh oh, yeah. it's yeah thir- it's a thursday night jake yep wow night. oh so, okay uh, luckily i'm off friday for veterans day and uh 
We're yes. going to stay up there and have a little fun and uh, get to experience Indy, which is one of my favorite cities. I love going up there. I got a lot of friends that live in Indy and play mm-hmm. music up there. We we like to sneak over to Broad Ripple and hit a few of the uh, mm-hmm. places over there. There's a bunch of cool little spots. Mm-hmm. So. Dude, if you have not Very been cool. to the Slippery Noodle, you need to go there too. The Never been to the Slippery Noodle. noodle. Uh, I think I've... I think I've used that the slippery noodle uh, a couple times, but uh, I don't, I've never been to the slippery noodle up there. Yeah, it's awful, man. <laughs> uh, is that, uh, yeah, does uh, the current girlfriend approve of the slippery noodle, Jake? <laughs> I, I think she does, yeah. She <laughs> does. What? What is, yeah. her, give me the first, give me her first date, because, Jake, you, you're kind of like my brother from another mother, too. And, you know, I know it, my little brother. <laughs> Uh, and you know, if you're happy, I'm happy. That's the kind of thing we have, but you know, I, as long as I've known you, this is to me, this is the first time you've, uh, you know, been in a, so, uh, let's, 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 let's go personal here been, a little bit. I haven't been tied down in a long time. So this was, uh, I know this was a special one. <laughs> yeah. Her, uh, her name's Haley and she's awesome. She got a little boy and a lot of fun and. Mm-hmm. Look forward to did, uh, bringing her out to some shows how, soon and introducing her to. Everybody. How did you all meet? Was this like a Wildwood gig? Uh, was was she there to watch? Like you know, come to see Kevin Cummings and then realize Kevin was like in a relationship, and then Jake was the <laughs> next man. <laughs> <laughs> she said, uh, "I like no. the bald drummer. The bald drummer." I quiet. like the bald drummer. <laughs> I w- I'm looking for a bald drummer. And she just missed Spare Chains Millionaire, so she hit the Wildwood gig, right? <laughs> uh, actually, uh, I arrested her a few uh, weeks ago. That's hot. And, uh, not, not just, it was not that like, <laughs> that was like, yeah, that was it. That was prior to Pillow Talk, right, Jake? <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, uh, we used to uh, we used to work at PBR together back a couple of years ago, and uh, we had a bunch of mutual friends. And cool, yeah. Uh, I don't know. The rest is history. <laughs> it is. Um, and again, t- it was tonight. Um, we were talk. I'm at bistros with my kids. Um, and um, you know, talking the whole. C- you know, we were talking some country music. My Claire loves her country music. Um, even though. Uh, Every time I'm in the car with her, it's 96.5, and I just bleh. But anyways, so she's talking country <laughs> music, and she, you know, she's digging Chase Skinner, Lin- Leonard, uh, a, re- a relative of Leonard Skinner. Did you know that Chase Skinner, <laughs> Jake, was a relative of Leonard Skinner? Greg brought that to my attention. Anyways. No, I heard that. We're, we're so full of flipping information. So I, was I was wondering yeah, I was if you wondering. told me you felt it differently and then I felt total, I felt like a total dumbass. So It's okay. It's, this, it still sounds the same. I mean, that's a great sound like that. time, I thought maybe Jake, uh, I thought maybe, you know. Chase. Uh, <laughs> or, <yeah. laughs> I thought Chase, now see, I thought, thought Chase had a connection to Leonard Skinner. And, and I was like, Yeah, Man. well, uh, we will take that conversation up with Chase because he's it's, it's actually in, it's, in the family, it's in the family genes, you know. It's in the family genes, and Chase has got some <laughs> stuff coming up. He he's going to come on the show soon, you know. And um, you know, it's funny, Jake. Right before it's funny, we're talking country music. Claire brings you up, and then she acknowledges, you know, you you know, the the uh, you're you're in your relationship, and we actually pulled up on Facebook one of your pics with you and the significant other and I looked at Claire and I'm like does that like it's like it was it gagged us both it was so sweet it was like (laughs) (laughs) but but you look happy and you're happy I'm happy we're happy (laughs) we're both happy for you but um yeah she's my little sweetie she is uh and yeah very good stuff uh what is uh what was i gonna say uh shit i mentioned country music now i've told about greg start talking let me think <laughs> start talking talk Can greg, you ask me talk. my thoughts on beyonce <laughs> oh <laughs> wow what was oh you know what i tell you what let's you i want to i'm gonna ask both of you guys because you know it is technically greg you are co-host with me but i kind of 
me, Kevin Hale, kind of own the host shooting from the lip brand. So I'm going to kind of pull rank here. Guys, last night, historic night. Yeah. You know, whether you're a Trump supporter, Hillary supporter, you had Trump who wins the election, who is clearly an outsider, uh, someone mm-hmm. off the beaten path as we know it. Hillary, female, There's there was history last night. And it was yep. freaking uh, brutal. It was, uh, you know, at the end of the night, we're all exhausted. I think it's safe to say we were all exhausted waiting for yeah. the results. Yeah. Hell, I felt. I like know. Yeah. Did you now? Really? I you felt, felt like, like, before the decision? I, yeah. I but you knew it. That time. But you you knew close. before you fell asleep. Okay. I did. Uh, I well, let's idea, start. But... Yeah, all right, Jake, we'll start. You're the guest. Uh, happy? Did you fall asleep in with warm fuzzies last night? Well, I kind of, to be honest, I, I tossed and turned because when I fell asleep, it it looked like Trump was going to win, but it was still too close to call. Mm-hmm. There was still a chance of, of it swinging the other way. And, uh, right. Which I'm not diehard Hillary or Trump, but okay. I absolutely despise Hillary Clinton, so I had to pick right. the lesser of the two evils. So, mm-hmm. um I think, I don't know. I think it'll be interesting, and I, I think Trump's going to surround himself with some good people, and and hopefully we can get some things going with the country. We we needed a change, that was for sure. So I just hope it's yeah. in the right direction. Yeah, Greg, your take real quick. Man, you know, I feel like Jake just pretty much echoed everything that I would say. Uh, you know, surrounding him with some good people. I I, I picked Trump over Hillary because <laughs> of her background. Um, and, mm. and basically, my biggest issue was the, the security of the country, and it didn't seem like – and taking care of our own, taking care of our veterans, and that didn't seem to be high on her list. And, and that was really the, the, the deciding factor for me. I think Trump mm-hmm. is kind of a jerk, um, but, you know, maybe – Lyndon Johnson was a jerk. Maybe all the other founding fathers, they had their issues, but they still mm. built our country on be, being strong and taking care of America. Um, America was built on uh, uh, on immigrants coming here. But, but those immigrants were coming here to start a new life and to build a life and to build an America and fight for America. The immigrants coming over here now, aside from the ones, the, the, the women and children that are in need, they're coming here to destroy America, and we need to tighten the reins on that stuff. And some that of them, to be, not all. Some of them. some, not all. Okay, not all, but yeah. but more. But 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 we're we're letting too much go by at this point. We're, we letting, the, the kind we're of, letting enough get in that is alarming. We need, we need something to happen to to tighten the reins. We need to check this out better. We need we need to be more careful and. Mm. Uh, and I, I think Trump had more of of that in mind than Hillary did, and that was kind of my deciding factor. And and I think he's going to surround himself, like like Jake Jake said, with some people. It's going to help. And uh, let's just hope things go well. You know, uh, I'm I'm not I'm not blowing the Trump horn, but that's uh, <laughs> that's the way I feel about it. Yeah. You know, it, it's it's I don't, I don't want to get too deep, but. Now yeah. is the time. Actually, you you say you're not blowing the Trump horn. The it, it's come and gone. Last night in now today, it, it is what it is. Trump is the next guy in line. So I I'm not a Trump guy, but now I'm okay to blow his horn because I am as open minded as I can be. I want to see him come in and succeed. Yeah. I want good sure things to happen. I'm rooting for him. I, as you're an American. Right. Yeah. As, uh, an as a fellow he's brother, exactly, exactly. Yeah, he's he our got if, got Hillary, if Hillary would have right. made it, I'm an American, and she would have been. You would have done right. I yeah, I think at the end of the day, you we we, yeah. we support, and I am looking forward to you know uh, what is it still to or Wednesday uh, to Thursday rolls around when Trump uh, meets up with Ob- with uh, Obama, um, yeah. and and all that goes on because. Like him or not, I, I Obama took a lot of, and yeah. in my heart of yeah. hearts, I felt like Obama got the shaft because of his color. And I, I'm, that's all I'll say, and I, I'm, I'm, I won't go too deep. But when you look at what Obama right now, the unemployment rate, 
the uh, job growth per month right now, uh, gas. Uh, you know, there there are things that Obama did accomplish. Obamacare. You can knock Obamacare. I, I you know, said I'm sorry, guys. I really didn't want to do politics thing, but but here we are. But you know, other countries who make that uh, notion to have their their people get be support. You know, have health care. You know, that's not a bad thing. And I I, I do no, think no. Obama's intentions. We're always good. I think he struggled with Congress, you know, but as an American citizen, I am 100 percent supporting Trump because I want what's best for us. Now, the other thing, here's a curveball, guys. Do you realize Melania will be the first first lady with uh, fake uh, tits in the White House? And I can support Amen. that. Amen. <laughs> Man. I, yeah. All right. Three to nothing. There's whether that's electoral or majority. Uh, this was this vote. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> and, you know, and God love her. Here's the thing is, she clearly shows that she is not into the whole uh, national glam oh, scene. She's, she's, she's a, a, actually, she's a, I, she's a sweetheart <laughs> to me. She's she's a mother first. She really, she's a mother first. She clearly is. She wants to be a mother. She's a family person. She's not starving for attention. And not to not say that that's what other first ladies, but that's that's not her thing. But God, yeah. she is the she is the most beautiful first lady ever. I'll say it. Yeah, she is. Yeah, hands down, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. You know, something I, I like about Trump, uh, he's a big supporter of law enforcement, and he is. He, yeah. He's got. He's got a pair of balls on him. Like he ain't afraid to speak his mind. I like that. And some people call it reckless, but um, I think it's it's good to have a president that's you know not going to take any shit, and he ain't afraid to be like, you know what, I don't disagree. Go, I don't man. agree with this. I'm going to try this, and he ain't afraid to. If, if somebody you know gives America shit, he ain't afraid to go out there and grab him by the pussy and take care of it. So um, <laughs> grab. No, here's what here's what we need to start a movement on. People who are listening. Check out people who are listening, whether it's, you know, a, a few dozen, you know, or actually our numbers have grown, Greg. We're, it's, we're, we're actually into the few hundreds now. People, there's a few wow. people who listen to us on Wednesday nights. So here's now, what I now suggest. I'm nervous. Now I'm nervous. Yeah. Hey, people who are listening, <laughs> grab a drummer's pussy uh, <laughs> this weekend if you can or anytime and let me know. Grab a drummer's pussy. So, now, I don't it, know if my wife's coming out this weekend. I don't think I can <laughs> All right. Uh, you got to take Badger. a selfie when you do it. And you take a selfie with the, yeah, with the, <laughs> yeah. Uh, now, Jake, um, before we let you go, uh, you got, again, you're in Indy. When do you leave? Tomorrow morning? Whatever. Uh, yeah, you I'll probably head out. out. Um, I'm working half day, so I'm heading out probably around one thirty. All right. Uh, from... Shooting from the lip, speaking for Craig, Russ, Tiffany, the people who are associated with shooting from the lip, we we 100% give a shout out to our guys in uniform, Jake Badger, for all that you guys do to, <laughs> no, this is, this is straight shooting here, that all that you guys do to uh, take care of us, the people, uh, you know, um, look out for the the best interests of of the people our safety all that good stuff and let's give a shout out to it you know we're the veterans day is what friday um let's yeah, say yeah, yeah. let's give a shout out man yeah, i i don't we don't do this enough i've got to uh, uh do a show greg i don't know whether it's probably going to be a monday night because it's monday nights are kind of off quirky nights but I've got to figure out a show to acknowledge the veterans because, um, you know, bottom line, without the veterans and without the the people who are are involved currently in, in you know, the armed forces, you know, we don't get to do what we get to do. And um, so much love, much, much, much love to those guys and, and gals, uh, special people. So uh, Jake, yeah, as I, always, I come from the yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go. I'm from a military family. My brother's Marine, and uh, grandparents were, or both of my grandfathers were Army, and uh, Veterans Day is always a uh, 
big day for us too and you know we always get together and and uh kind of celebrating on our our uh our brothers that you know paid the ultimate sacrifice and you know you see a lot of a lot of shit going on especially you know after the election and you know people so upset and i put a post about it earlier you know you know if our biggest problem that we have right now is arguing over democrats and republicans and we're gonna lose sleep over it tonight you know we need to step back and be thankful what for what we have and and that we have the right to even bitch about it and uh Mm -hmm. it wouldn't have been possible without all the veterans so good call you know what let's give a shout out yes the veterans definitely deserve the shout outs but let's let's give let's again give thanks to uh the people who are doing it in real time you jake the uh you know my i'll give a shout out my son-in-law our our air force you know it's um you know we we take we take a lot of shit for granted and um without a lot of people you know we can't do this without a lot of people who make the sacrifices and you know the jake badgers of the world i've got family who are in law enforcement (laughs) No, I'm, I'm I'm being serious, Jake. I mean, you guys yeah. go out there, uh, you put your your uniform on, you put you know, and you protect and serve. And let's I don't I don't take that shit for granted. I mean, think about you, my whoever, to get do the job, take care of us, and make it home safe. And uh, yeah, because you know, Jake, you got gigs to play. So you know, <laughs> I know, man. Yeah. Well, you know, seriously. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Seriously. Much. Uh, you know. As Greg. Greg gets. Greg teases me because shooting from the lip. One of shooting from the lips. Guilty pleasures. Shooting from the lips slash Kevin Hale. Guilty pleasures is Wildwood. Jake Badger. I. I've always. Yeah. I'm. I'm a Jake think, Badger guy. I think that Jake is like the shooting from the lip mascot. Well, actually, here check us out. <laughs> when, when check us out, uh, Jake. When I I enlighten Greg, we because we had our show booked tonight, and then you know you were kind of like a last minute, not last minute, but you came on after the yeah. fact after Greg and I had already knew we were doing a couple who the guests were. You know, Greg asked me point or said, "Does he have pictures of you? Does he have <laughs> something on you?" <laughs> And I'm like, I said, I'm like, said, you know what? Just, do you owe him money? Do you owe him money? Yeah. Or something? You know, but you know, here's my take, Greg. For the record, Greg, he yeah. he may not have pictures of me, but I'll I will gladly send pictures of me to, to whoever to Jake. I trust. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm good with Jake having those kind of pictures of me. So Jake, right. yeah, Jake is Jake That's is my TMI. Jake is my boy. That's I, I can't say too I'm much just different. saying I can't say no to Jake it, unless he <laughs> said unless he said hand me the loop then I would draw the line with Jake that's Whoa. that's that's probably where yeah. but you know, he just crossed the line right there he just crossed the line. I know it's yeah. and it's internet radio so oh, hey but check this out <laughs> we are officially technically off the air live so people will hear this on the download and you know what I'm not going to delete it I don't care it doesn't mean I'm gay because I said no, no, no lube. You know, lube is a no-no. That actually means really I'm kind of straight. Anyways, Jake, we love you. I well, I love you. Greg probably likes you. you. Yeah, okay, like, Greg. I'm not gonna see pictures of me or anything, but, but we're, we're good. <laughs> yeah, Jake. Uh, we uh, yeah, much always. It's it's my pleasure to talk to Jake. Uh, Jake knows where he stands with me. So, Jake, good luck tomorrow night. Yeah, man, have fun. Uh, are you gonna okay, have? Yes. Are you gonna have pillow? Good pillow talk tonight with uh, the? Or is she there or not? Uh, no, I think she's already crashed out already, for the night. But all uh, right. Speaking of pillow talk, tell Andrew that <laughs> I said hello. Yeah, we got a good day. <laughs> he is a oh yeah, I love it. We uh when wait, wait remind me, remind us, Jake. When is the next local Wildwood gig? Is it the the with, December third at, at Baxter's? It is back. Okay, yes, so wow, I get Greg and Jake in one night. Yeah, it's it's, it's gonna be a fun you know night, if man. I was okay. if I wasn't if I was wasn't straight, then you know it would be on, but. You know, I'm straight. That'd be, a, that'd be a hell of a drummer sandwich, wouldn't it? 
<laughs> it would be a nice indeed, threesome. Indeed. Yeah. All right, Jake. Good night, brother. I'll be in touch. <laughs> As always, uh, appreciate all y'all's support, and uh, thank you guys yes. for having me on. All be right, safe, buddy. Care, man. All right, we'll holler at y'all later. All right. Be safe. Bye. Oh, Greg. Did I? It's 11.50, Greg. 11.51. Yeah, it, Did I keep up. you up? To, is it past your bedtime, uh, Greg? Man, I was ex- I was tired, dude. I was staying up so late last night. You know, I, I was watching. I was trying to stay up to see the final result, and I fell asleep at one point. I think it was like, I don't know, one thirty, two o'clock, and, and then I rolled over. I was asleep, and I rolled over, and as soon as I rolled over, I heard them announce on the TV, uh, we, this just in, Trump, got, I think it was New Hampshire, that was the one that, that broke the camel's back. And they announced him. So I actually did get to see him announce it. I heard it, kind of looked up, and then <laughs> fell back asleep. But, I'm, yeah, I didn't get much sleep. But uh, it's all good, man. We had a good time, didn't we? we, we you know, we do. I mean, seriously, yeah. um, you know, you and I were together. We Where were we at? TK's. You were getting, mm-hmm. We were at the bar. Someone approached us and and asked, you know, we do we do the podcast? Blah blah blah. That's always a cool thing. It's not an ego yeah, thing. Yeah, but like you, that. you do like that. Yeah. I, no, no, it's it's not. It's not ego. Oh, My you, thing you is that. I, no, I I like it for the fact that I know that there's people listening, because well, the you, truth you, is, you surprised me when you said we got. Like you know, a couple hundred people checking in with we us. Do. A, I mean, there awesome. are, there are people who listen to us uh, because the fact you know, in the the music thing, we are generating our Wednesday night show is generating an audience because musicians because one actually it, it's it's simple math when you think about it. People who are list are listening to our show right now is is a combination of people who been on it, shared our shows, shared their mm-hmm. their views, their comments that they've had a good time doing our shows. You yeah. know, the Jake Badgers, Josh, uh, who yeah. who know us, speak very well of our show. You know, tonight yeah. listen, at Bistro, if I heard Chase Skinner mention shooting from the lip once, he said it several times. And Yeah, yeah I'm, I, I caught that. I understand where you're, you're going with that. And, and I was waiting for you to come out the other night, man, because I was going to make sure that that we gave the big loud plug at Gerstle's. <laughs> We're yeah, but you know yeah. it goes without saying because, and here's where uh, I'm. I know I'm keeping you on just a little bit longer than you want. Uh, well, this I is where you. I it's uh, I struggle because you know I I've had people message me that we need more we need certain types of guests on. Wednesday mm-hmm. nights. I've kind of got hit. I've got hit with that because yeah. you know tonight Jake or J- Josh Bogart is a country guy, country music guy. Uh-huh. Jake Badger is country music. I was getting kind of hit with some people that we haven't done. We have not acknowledged the country music scene a lot lately. And of course, uh-huh. my first reaction is that well, uh, Greg's buddies are not country music people. So. <laughs> Well, I mean, I really, I'd have to come back and say that I think that we've had a lot of the, the country music people on. I think it's we been a have. good mix. It, it, yeah, it has. Good mix. Uh, you know, but probably not people, lately. Right. I've had some people kind of throw that out at me that we need to, you know, could we spice it up, if you will. And, you yeah. know, and I acknowledge that, I acknowledge them. I'm like, I, I hear you, point taken, you know, whatever. But at the end of the night, it's um, you know I, I think our Wednesday nights. I'm all I, I've I've always been okay with the finished product of a Wednesday night show because yeah. as a musician or as a fan of music, mm-hmm. I, the stories are great. Yeah, I trust I trust Greg to with his connections because you know you, you bring on you you get us talented people and. Um, well, I've got, so, some, no, uh, I've got some country music people in mind that uh, I'm going to reach out to, and, yeah. and, uh, and, and it's we'll, all good. Uh, we'll do that. We'll, we'll put them on the first segment. We, I've, I've got a person in mind. I've actually reached out to him before, and, and I think he was uh, on the road or something at the time, but he, uh, he's willing to come on. Uh, is it? Uh, is it uh, just tell me, is it Keith Urban? 
No, no, it's not Keith. Uh, Keith is okay. uh, Wednesdays. He does bridge. He, it's his bridge night. Um, I talked to him. He said he, he can't do Wednesdays, but uh, uh, actually, it's a, it's a it's a fellow named Hank Rose who is. Uh, uh, he actually plays Hank. with J D. Shepard. Oh, yeah, I know, I know Wait. Hank. Hank, I've actually, I think yeah. I, I met him at, I met him at the county line. So he's excellent. Hank, he is, uh, yeah, he oh, is. Oh, he's a great, great, great singer, great singer, great yeah. bass player. We need to get Hank. Yeah. yeah. So you know, our our show, as I acknowledge to the people who messaged me, I don't, I will not apologize for our Wednesday night shows at no. all. Oh. Uh, because the the guests, the talent itself. So but it's great to have the suggestions, so we can know where to turn. It to is and, uh, try, exactly. Try to things up, like you said, yeah. You know, in in the in in the best case scenario would be that our Wednesday night show would be so popular that we would do another night. You know, and I don't know what mm. uh, down the road what that schedule would be like for us. But the truth is, is that. If you and I wanted to do one more night a week with local musicians, you and I can pull that off because the talent is there and the reception is there. Because what I've come to find out, Greg, is that people are listening because they want to know about, you know, a musician that they heard about or knew of and they get to listen to some of the stuff. You know, uh, case in point, uh, shit, what's his name? Brian. Um, Help me out, Brian right? Fox. Brian Fox. No, Murphy. Brian. Ryan. Ryan. Ryan Murphy. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I reached out. Uh, I had some dialogue with Ryan. Ryan is a. You know, he did a TV show locally when it with promoting local music. You remember that? What did he do a like a show on TV? Right. Uh, I don't right? remember. I don't remember that. Well, I I, th- I think he did. And when he and I, when I post, I reached, you know, when we talk, I'm like, Ryan, come on and do the show with us. He's like, absolutely. I listen to it all the time. You know, Ryan, Ryan's kind of somebody in local scene. So that, yeah, that is flattering when, you know, Ryan acknowledges, yeah, I've heard, not only if I've heard of you, I've listened, it's fun shows. So yeah, there's, and, Oh, here's a shout out, my friend Julie, who listens to all of our podcast, all of our shows in Australia. Really? I think I'm missing this too. Julie, she's on. I'll, I'll shoot you her Twitter because you'll need to follow her. She's yeah. such a sweetheart. She listens to every one of our shows. She was, we were messaging, and she acknowledged. She goes, I, she, she's. I can't remember what the conversation was, but she flat out said, she goes. Wednesday nights are your favorite shows, aren't they? And I'm like, why do you say? She goes, I hear your your passion in the show. <laughs> and, yeah. she, and, and I'm like, I, I can't argue that. Music is a passion. Music is my escape from reality. It, I love it, the paranormal. Yeah. I love Russ. <laughs> Russ. Right. But, you know, there's but, no pressure. There's no pressure there, on us with with the music thing, man. It's it's it, it, it's natural. It speaks for itself, right? There's no uh, rhyme or reason. I mean, it, it is music is it's reality. I mean, it's it really is. I mean, it it's the real thing. There's well, no uh, conspiracies. There's no hidden agendas. It's we you know music is is the best thing and uh, you know, so and just just like you said man there there's a whole genre of 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 musicians out there that that really I I haven't even reached out to there's there's some some fellows that's that I've played with and some other bands and some guys that's been playing around town uh, that'll probably a lot of our are it's an older aged group but mm-hmm. they 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 started not started the music scene. I shouldn't say that, but, but they kept it rolling in Louisville. That there's some fellows that I know that I can get on. It's very, very well known, you know, to the, to the older musicians, you know, just like mm-hmm. you mentioned today, Jake, you know, uh, uh, Jake and those guys, they're the younger scene. Well, I know some of the guys from the older scene and, and you know, they've got stories to tell and they've got their success and they've done things as well. So, there's a whole cornucopia of guests that we can reach out to in different genres. Cornucopia. Big yeah. words. Well, thank you. G-Money. Yeah, you are the man. Seriously, 
Uh, I'll, 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 I gotta, I'm going to put you on the spot, Greg. Has <laughs> Wednesday night's show been uh, what you expected? Because seriously, when you first did the shows with me, you know, it was, I think it was, it was a new, obviously it was a new thing to you. Yeah. Um, but, you know, you know, just to give you some kudos, you, you've killed it, man. Our vibe on Wednesday nights is like great because, yeah, you know, we, we just, you know, as long as we're on the same page when I, we, one of us go on potty breaks, we know that <laughs> when it comes to, <laughs> to dead air, we got to cover each other. But yeah. you, you have, you have been a natural at the, and, and, you know, and a lot of it probably is the fact that you're, you are a musician, you know, what these guys, the mindset of these, of the guests and you, you can relate to them, but we're we're doing something kind of cool on Wednesday night. I think yeah. that's the main thing. I do have the the insight on on what they do, how how, how they do it, how we do it. Um, you know, I keep up with with some of it, not all of it. I, w- I wish I could keep up with all of it, but you know, it's it's hard because it is a big scene, man. It's a big scene, and, but it you is. know, I try. I, I do my best, and I've gotten more comfortable with it. Uh, um, now that I know there's 200 people listening, um, I may not be as comfortable. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, I like to joke <laughs> around. If if I just stay myself and, and, and joke around, I like I like being corny, and that's me. So as it's long us. As I can be that's both of them. Yeah, it's us. Right. It's us. As long as we can be corny right. and cut up, and, and I also like being serious and, and giving props where it's due. Like Mark, you know, having Mark on tonight. You know, Mark that that rain that rain. Uh, uh, Wow! Uh, if yes. the thing that he's in—that's that, the real deal, man. That—that's—that's that's nothing. That's not local. That's that's international. No, that's that's, bro- na- that's it's free internet. Broadway. Right. That's Broadway. Right. <laughs> you know. So yeah. you know. That, that's yeah. People who yeah. And I'll throw this out there: people who are listening to tonight's show and hear someone like Mark uh, Byer coming on and promote the Rigby's rain. You know that whole the whole tie to the Beatles thing. Look up um what was the what shit oh, the, his website rain uh rain trip oh, damn it um, rain tribute yeah uh rain I'm looking up rain just, tribute dot com in, right yeah you can put in anything but the rain rain beetles rain it will come up right so yeah, rain tribute dot com you go do look at their site look at who they are playing to internationally. Uh, the the audience they're catering to, the following they have, if if that's not an indication of the type of guests, people that we are bringing on this show, that are qual not 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 even quality are first rate. These are like the elite people, you know, locally who have who have paid their dues locally, their blood, sweat, and tears locally. And work their asses off to, to you know, be successful locally. Whether it's it's their livelihood or it's a hobby, um, you know, that's that's who we are. Is we are bringing uh, the music scene through, you know, via Wednesday nights to our listeners. Is that we are showing off what's local, the talent here. You know, so you know, people who are not familiar with these acts, check us out, check out our shows, and listen because there is, there is so much talent here. I am blown away with every show we do, and <laughs> I'm blown away with you know the guests. Now, granted, tonight was not a Greg unthink you know down memory lane type of show. And I respect no, but that. We don't need tonight, that all Greg, the time. We, we don't we don't want we, that all the time. Right, we don't. Which I'll, I'll throw out. Monday night, Russ and I did a show where we did it was a pre-election show. We had yeah. callers, people call in nationally. We had people from Ohio, California. Shit, there was another oh, state. Wow. People called in, and you know it was a very respectful show. Uh, oh, okay. You know, people good. sharing yeah, their passion for the election, camp. Actually, man. Yeah, yeah okay. it actually it was. It was. It was very nasty, and it it wore really in the big picture. It wore the nation down. It, it no, did, it and for for Hillary to come out today and acknowledge 
in her, um, you know, after the fact that, you know, she gave Trump props and she asked the nation, she asked her followers, she asked the people, be open minded, give him a chance. Yeah. Well, you know, and the, after, yeah, Obama after today, the election, I understand what you're saying, but but my father made made a point to me. He said that's what that's what politicians do. Um, <laughs> you know, it Obama. Is. You're right. Obama said a lot of stuff about Trump, and then Obama he did. said, you know, did the same approach. You know, support him. You know, give him a chance. Right. That's what mm-hmm. politicians do. So that's, that's what, what politicians, that's, right. they, and that's what they should. But do. you know what? Yeah, to Trump's credit, to Trump's credit, yep. he, you know, in his last night's speech, from what I heard, heard from speech. about Trump good. today, it was good. He yeah. acknowledged Hillary conceding, uh, wishing him and his people, the his, you know, his support, you know, his people the best support. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's it's who we are as a nation. We have to move on in Trump. Yeah. Based on the, the democracy of the country is our guy now. So, yeah. All right. And, Greg, and I think he's young and he's a work to process, man. I think he's he got is. guys saying, look, look, you can't do that anymore. You can't say that anymore. Right. You can't do that anymore. So, but yeah, you know, hopefully. check this out. Check this out. Yeah. What also this election uh, did for a lot of what did for the nation is that Trump, who has no quote unquote political experience, He doesn't have a resume. He doesn't have a resume when it comes to uh, D.C., Washington, you know, govern, you know, the whole political thing. What Mm -hmm. I think last night did was open up the future for someone else who. Very great point. 2020. The Jake Jake Badgers of the world. The Jake Badgers. You know what? I'll tell you what. Someone and I jokingly actually it was one of my kids said it it was funny because it was it was they were looking at Facebook and it was just something that they saw the rock Dwayne Johnson. If the rock wanted to run for president in 2020, do you think what do you think his chances are of winning the 2020 election? Pretty damn good because Trump just showed you. Yeah, Trump showed you last night. Yeah. You don't have yeah. to be part of the system. You don't. You just you have, don't. And, you and I'll bring up another name. You, you either love him or you hate him. And that's Ted Nugent, a rock and roller who's <laughs> very, you know oh. very political. And, you, and let me tell you, if he was to run, he would get some votes. <laughs> he he would, would get some votes. Man. You're yeah. right. Absolutely. Yeah. And I think don't last night the opened the door that you do not have to be one of the boys, or actually a girl. No. You don't have to be one of the girls. So right. in 2020, if Kanye West, Jay Z, John Cena, The Rock, whoever, who who can resonate with the with the U.S., more power to them. As long as they have the best interests of our country in mind, I'm okay with it. And I do now. Uh, I'm 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 going to root for Trump. Well, got I, to. I want we're, to do it. We man. got to, right? We he's have on our to. side. He's on our side, you know. So we, we gotta, exactly. we gotta hope. We gotta have hope in him. Hope right. and faith first, you know. So and then uh, ho- hope he does the right thing. And uh, you know, and ba- and back to the opening the door thing. You know, we can't forget about Ronnie Reagan. You know, he was a big movie star. He was right. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. he was a big movie star. So all right, buddy, I'm going to bed, man. All right, Greg. Good night. Uh, as I do my little quick uh, sign off for Greg Unthank, who is our sexy mofo on Wednesday night. I'm Kevin Hale. We wish everyone a good night and a pleasant Thursday, November 10th. Peace out, Louisville. Celebrate our sign veterans off. on Friday. Exactly. Take care. Good night. Later. No time or any animals or people hurt during this presentation of shooting from the lip.